I've been using the Bose QC Ultra for well over three months now. So today we'll see how well they score and rank against 10 of the best earbuds in 10 categories. Because in some areas they absolutely kill it, but they're just missing tons of features that should really be here at their price. Because they retail for 299 US, 449 Australian, not cheap. And I've also got my custom scoring spreadsheet linked below so you can tailor the scoring to match what you find most important and compare all the earbuds nice and easily. I'll explain more of that later though, but let's start with category number one, comfort. Now the ergonomics here are really well thought out. I get barely any suction or pressure as the fit isn't too deep. You get three sizes of ear tips, although you can purchase an extra small and extra large on the Bose website if needed. And for me, the medium ear tips give me the best comfort, but the large ear tips give me a better seal for a stronger noise cancelling. So try all the ear tips, see what works for you. So the comfort here is great. It's a fit that I can wear all day. As long as you don't mind oval ear tips. I know some people complain about oval ear tips. I see it in the comments. And that's my only complaint with the fit. I do feel the, I guess, ovalness of the ear tips. So it feels like there's more in the ear canal, but at the same time, this oval shape reduces that pressure and suction. So for me, it still works fine. And you are stuck with the stock ear tips. I tried spin fit and sonic foam, but they're not gonna fit in the case. So you need a shallow fitting ear tip. Even a shallow tip like the spin fit CP1025 would fit in the case, but it doesn't fit on the earbud. So with all of this, they get a score of eight when it comes to comfort. Next is how secure the buds stay in. And with the optional wingtip, you get two sizes. They stay in incredibly securely for me when I'm weight training as well as running. So I'm giving them a score of eight as well as a lot of the other earbuds. But keep in mind, I find most earbuds just stay in my ears quite well. So if you find a regular kind of fitting earbud doesn't work for you, this is probably gonna be your best option because that wingtip is gonna provide a lot of extra stability. And when I tested them out when running, normally stem design earbuds like this do work better. They create very minimal body borne noise with that weight distribution in the bud, kind of pulling the bud down into your ear canal so the bud isn't gonna bounce around too much. But if you make quite heavy impact on the ground, if you're like a heel striking runner, I did notice it still made a bit of a reverb sound every time I hit the ground heavily, but if you're a four foot runner or don't make too much impact, this is gonna be fine. And if you like using your earbuds when training, they have an IPX4 water resistant rating. Next is case and battery life. And this is where Bose starts to lose some points. The battery life is fine. Six hours with the buzz, 24 hours in total. That's with noise canceling on. They actually don't advertise what you get with noise canceling off, but you normally expect at least 20% more battery. The fast charge is interesting. Put the buds in the case for 20 minutes and it's gonna give you two hours of playback, which is a strange way to advertise it. The standard is five minutes in the case will give you an hour's playback. So I'm not sure if you put the buds in the case for 10 minutes, if that'll give you an hour's playback, but still, not the best. And they also don't have wireless charging. It's the only pair here today that doesn't have it. And at the price you're paying, it really just should be there. The case doesn't have any dust or water resistance and it's quite a large case. Although the actual thickness isn't too bad. I've got them ranked fifth when it comes to how thin the case is. Compared to the AirPods Pro 2, which is the thinnest, you can see quite a bit of difference there. So with all of this, they get a score of five. The lack of wireless charging really bringing that score down. Next category is controls and they make a bit of a comeback here because you're actually able to control everything, play, pause, track forward and back, noise cancelling as well as volume up and down on just the one earbud since they use a swipe gesture to increase or decrease volume and it's very intuitive. The actual touch surface of the touch controls is quite large so it's very easy to increase or decrease. You don't get much customization except for the long hold on the left and right earbud activating noise cancelling, spatial audio or you can add in the voice assistant option. The wearing detection is super responsive and you can choose to turn transparency on when you take one earbud out and leave the other one in. Now you technically can't turn noise cancelling off but you can customize what they call modes. So you can add a mode where the noise cancelling strength is set at 50% which will pretty much mimic having noise cancelling on or off. My only complaint with the touch controls is when tapping it does make a bit of an echo reverb sound in your ear canal. It's not painful or anything and you can just tap softer to reduce this but sometimes when I'm on the move I just tap whatever like level of strength and it can get kind of annoying. Definitely not a deal breaker though. Still, they get a solid score of eight out of 10 up there with the best. It's just the AirPods Pro 2 with an extra half point. Since their wearing detection actually has skin detection, so you can put one earbud in your pocket and the music won't resume, where on all the other earbuds with wearing detection, your music will resume. And AirPods also have the handy always on Siri. Now, when it comes to connectivity, Bose has failed once again, not giving you multi-point connection, which wasn't on the QC2. I honestly thought they were gonna add it to the QC Ultra. 
I feel like they shouldn't really call it the QC Ultra if it doesn't even have multi-point connection. So you can't connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. They have added in Aptex lossless high-res streaming. So that'll give you a slight improvement in sound quality once you've paired it with the right streaming service. But there are further issues when it comes to connectivity. I had the same issues with the QC2 earbuds and that's with like the earbuds just not connecting a lot of the time when I took them out of the case and more dropouts in connection than most earbuds that I've tested. Bose just updated the QC Ultra with 1.7.6, which was aimed to fix a lot of these issues and it has improved the earbuds connecting to my phone when I took them out of the case. It still happens every now and then and the connection is a little bit choppy at times but it's definitely not a deal breaker. It's good to see that they are trying to improve this. And you can still use one earbud at a time while you leave the other in the case and if you're using one earbud it is going to work in mono mode. So you hear the left and right audio channel in the one earbud. So taking all this into account, I'm giving them a total score of six. The lack of multi-point is a big one. All the other earbuds have it, except for the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. They don't have multi-point connection, but they at least have seamless switching with Samsung devices. Now, when it comes to gaming latency, this is what I got in my test on iOS and Android. 400 milliseconds is fine for casual games. You wanna get closer to 200 milliseconds for fast reaction games like shooters. Next category is call quality. And in my call quality testing, I run through a quiet room test, simulation loud kid noise, and a simulation windy city with voices construction and a fan mimicking wind. They are ranked the lowest with a score of six because they really did struggle in the wind noise test. But you can switch between noise cancelling and transparency when you're on a phone call, which is nice if you just want to be able to hear your own voice. You also have the option to turn on self voice, but you might as well just turn on transparency mode because it sounds a lot better than the self voice. And you get no customization of the call controls. All that you can do is double tap to answer or reject the call and there's no control to mute your microphone. But here are the call quality samples so you can hear it for yourself. All right, here is a call quality of the Bose QC Ultra in a nice quiet room. All right, so now we're gonna test the ability for the microphones to block out some kids' noise being played quite loud outside my uh, studio door right now. All right, here's the call quality of the Bose QC Ultra with some kid noise being played in the distance. All right, so now I've got some construction noise being played in the near distance, some crowd noise being played on my MacBook Pro. I've got my trusty fan here to simulate some wind noise. Now I've already run through a lot of the app, but we'll cover a couple of extra aspects. And overall it's decent, but you're just getting the basics here. The user interface is nice and simple. The home page has everything you need. Modes is gonna be your noise canceling and transparency switching, which you can customize. The EQ is very minimal. You only get three bands and you can't save any presets. The shortcut tab has your control customization. Again, quite minimal amount of customization there. Source will have all the Bluetooth connections. Immersive audio is your spatial audio options. Tips has some basic info on how to use the earbuds and the settings tab on the top right has all your extra customization. So you have your ear tip fit test in there, self voice when you're on a phone call, your wearing detection settings, which you can customize and you can customize the voice prompts, decide whether you want your battery read out to you every time you take the earbuds out of the case or not. And you can change the language as well. So with that, I'm giving them a score of six. The main issue being the pretty lackluster EQ customization, minimal control customization. You don't get a find my case or earbuds feature, no hearing test if you have hearing loss, and there's no voice detect feature to automatically turn your transparency mode on when you start speaking, when you have noise canceling off. And if you wanna compare all these features nice and easily, again, my spreadsheet is linked down below. Now let's talk about noise cancelling. First, how I test my noise cancelling, I chuck on my soundbar and I'm playing simulation, plain noise and crowd noise. So I'm testing low, middle, high, consistent, as well as inconsistent sounds. And the QC Ultra, it's simply the best noise cancelling you get. They're getting a 10 out of 10. The first 10 out of 10 I've given. And here's my noise cancelling ranking with all the earbuds that I have tested. The QC2 in the second spot with the XM5 just behind in strength. Comparing the QC2 to the XM5, I've heard the XM5 work better for some people and it's super close, but do keep in mind the way the earbuds fit you can massively affect the noise cancelling strength. Even a slightly different seal can have a huge impact on noise cancelling. And Bose also uses what they call custom tune technology to not only personalize the sound to your ear canal, but also the noise cancelling. But either way, the Bose Ultra are just on another planet when it comes to blocking out all frequencies. And they're one of the few earbuds that actually lets you customize the strength of the noise cancelling. And you can also save that setting and add it to your noise cancelling switching. They also have the least amount of EQ shift. So that's how your sound quality changes with noise cancelling on compared to transparency, compared to noise cancelling off. Like I said, you technically can't turn noise cancelling off, but when I was testing the EQ shift, sliding that slider all the way down and turning it all the way up, turning transparency mode on, 
I barely notice any difference with the sound. So the least amount of EQ shift out of any of the earbuds here today. And there is an automatic wind noise reduction built into the noise canceling. Thankfully, when I was walking outside, the microphones don't pick up too much wind, even on quite a windy day. But if they do, it will slowly turn the noise canceling strength down. And then as soon as that wind stops, it's gonna slowly transition it back out. So you don't really notice it. It's done quite well. My only issue with the noise canceling is every time I would turn it on, my left earbud would make a very slight, low volume, crackling, sort of distorting sound. It really only happens when I turn it on and then if I leave it on with no music playing I can hear it it kind of comes in and out every now and then it's definitely not a deal breaker if you have music playing you definitely won't notice it but I thought it was worth mentioning it really shouldn't happen with a bud at this price as well so Bose QC buds owners let me know if you've experienced this as well the next category is transparency and I'm giving the Bose a score of nine the clarity is almost on par with the AirPods Pro, although they're just not as natural, but you get no occlusion. So basically when you speak, your voice sounds very natural. It's not echoey or kind of muffled. And hearing other people speak is very clear as well, even in a noisy environment. But the only issue there is that they do have quite a bit of white noise hiss, only really noticeable if you're in a quiet room though. And you also have the option to turn on what they call active sense, which is pretty much an adaptive transparency mode, which will kind of blend the noise canceling in with the transparency when the microphones pick up loud noises. And this works a lot better than I remember when I first tested the QC2 earbuds. So it's a very smooth transition in and out of when it does pick up loud sounds. So for example, I'll turn on the tap, put my head close to the tap, and it will slowly turn the transparency mode down, which is great if you just wanna be able to hear your music well without having to increase or decrease the volume. Another good example is like when I turn my blender on, I don't have to worry about turning noise canceling on, it'll automatically transition the noise canceling on. And the smoothness of the transition, it's pretty much on par with the AirPods Pro 2 adaptive transparency. But the AirPods Pro 2 have a score of 10. They're still the king of transparency. You get all the features Bose have, but it's just a little bit clearer and more natural at the same time with barely any white noise. Now the final and most important category is sound quality. Keeping in mind, I'm taking into account volume, the sound itself, as well as how well you can customize the sound. First, let's get spatial audio out of the way or what Bose calls immersive audio. And it's your classic spatial audio. You have the option to turn head tracking on or off and it works pretty well. It does push the sound slightly in front of you, but at the same time, it does create quite a weird echo effect with most frequencies, kick drums, vocals sound a little bit off, instrumentation sounds a bit reverby. Is, re is that a word, reverby? It is now. I mean, it's fun to play around with. It's gonna work better with movies, but still the best spatial audio that I've tested is from the Denim Pearl Pro. They do it quite well where it doesn't have too much of that weird reverb and echo effect. Full video coming on those soon. Make sure you're subscribed to see when that one comes out and I'll add that to this entire ranking as well. But continuing with the sound now, let's start with volume here. I got just over 113 decibels in my test. Plenty of volume to play with, but more importantly, they retain quite a bit of bass when you are venturing at those high volumes. So they retain the same tuning. There's no weird day speed kicking in that completely changes the sound. They also have a special EQ at lower volumes to boost the bass and the treble, and they do so incredibly well, pushing out a nice amount of bass, potentially a little bit too much. It kind of does take over on those first few clicks, but it boosts the treble nicely as well. And they are one of the better sounding earbuds at the lower volumes. This is my current ranking. The earbuds with a higher ranking there just have a little bit more of a balanced sound of bass and treble. And you want your earbud to do this because naturally we hear less bass and treble at those lower volumes. But now onto the sound itself and Bose has always had quite a unique tuning going all the way back to their first QC earbuds where the mids are definitely the star of the show. If you just want the clearest mids that stand out the best, this is gonna be the pair to go for. At the same time, you still get nice deep sub bass. The mid bass is balanced, so it's not gonna bleed into the other frequencies. My only complaint with the sound is the upper treble is slightly lacking, so it does like a little bit of sparkle and presence, but it has great detail at the same time. The sound stage is also the most closed in out of all the earbuds, but with that super clear mid range, the instrument separation is some of the best. And usually an easy fix for that lackluster upper treble is being able to EQ it in the app, but with that limited three band EQ, when I was playing around with it, this is the best sound I could get. When I went past two, even three decibels on treble, it starts to sound a little bit harsh and sibilant and it's not really boosting the upper treble. It's like, I don't know, what, I actually don't know what band it's increasing, but if they just had another couple of bands, I would much prefer to increase the treble trouble in those high frequencies. But still with this slight V-shaped tuning, it does dial the mids down a little bit because I found them, although they sound very clear, a little bit unnatural. So bringing them down in the EQ does help. And I always like doing a little bit of extra bass boosting, but you can even keep the bass at zero there and they're still gonna sound great. So taking all of this into account, they're getting a solid 7.5 out of 10. So not the best sounding earbud you can get at this price, but still it's a very fun tuning that I think anyone's gonna like. 
But now let's look at the current leaderboard. The QC Ultra with a score of 73 out of 100. Despite the lowest score though, if it's simply the strongest noise cancelling you're after, these are the pair to get. It might even be worth grabbing the QC2 earbuds. You don't get spatial audio or aptX lossless, but everything's pretty much the same. The noise cancelling is just slightly weaker. But if it's the strongest noise cancelling you want and you just want an all round better earbud, the Sony XM5s are my next best pick or the Jabra Elite 10. But don't take my word for it. Take what your preferences are. That's why I created the custom scoring spreadsheet, free to download, linked below. I've got notes on every single score, specs for easy comparisons, as well as an advanced scoring system for you extra picky people. It's super simple to use. Just fill out a number in the importance column for each category, and that's gonna multiply the total score. Zero will get rid of it, 0 0.5 to halve the scoring, two to double, five to five X the score. You can do whatever you want there. So I hope it helps and make sure you're subscribed because I'm constantly adding new earbuds that I'm reviewing and testing to that scoring spreadsheet. And if you are looking for a better all-round earbud, check out my Jabra Elite 10 detailed review here. In the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.